Rasta Max. Welcome to Rasta Max. All right. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is I'm gonna grab I don't touch my nose and everything. Look at what's going on, everybody. This is DJ Legacy. Uh, you are watching the Soapbox Podcast Blackout Funny. How's everybody doing? Uh, I'm here. Let's let me go ahead and introduce our co-host, lovely co-host, all the way from uh Boston, Brockton, the lady from up north. What's going on, Jesse? What's popping? How you doing, TJ? Everybody, I'm doing how well. you doing? I'm doing well, doing well. <laughs> Uh, all the way from Tallahassee. Uh, what's going on, Giovanni? Hey, guys. Not much. Just happy to be healthy and alive. Giovanni got the leopard print on today. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I, I, see, I, I see. I see. I see it. And this is a special episode because I know we've been talking about social justice for uh, a good little while. So we're kind of, we're not diverting, but we're, we're kind of taking a little pause because we want to ex- celebrate, you know, the funny, the joy, black joy, and all that good stuff. So I brought some comedians along to help us out. Let me introduce uh, my man. I, I call him Vincent, but I'm gonna call him Vince. Vince Taylor, comedian Vince Taylor. What's going on, my man? Hey, bro. Hey, no, I'm signing off right now. We on here for justice, homeboy. Um, well, we ain't some damn comedy. So listen here, bro. No justice, no peace, no, 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 no racist police, no That's rapping, right. no cheese. Uh, right. <laughs> you know we got all sorts. We got all sorts of uh, orders. Orders for justice. Got you. Uh, <laughs> like it's a rest. Like it's a restaurant. Can I get a side of uh, justice and equality, please? Uh, so uh, I don't know where they're all located, but comedian uh, Gina G, what's going on? How you doing? Welcome to the soapbox. What's going on, beautiful people? I am all the way in the VA where they just took the statue down. We got one statue now. Yay. The most statues to go gang, 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 gang. Hey. <laughs> On the side, a confederate on the side. Oh, you better tell them, girl. Like, everybody, everybody just put in, everybody in the comment section, put in your order for justice. So she wants to right. put the confederate statue down on, on the side. Uh, Jen, Jen Weeks, comedian Jen Weeks, how you doing? What's hey, going on? Where, where are you located right now? Where this are you in Jen the Weeks. justice fight? This is Jen Weeks. I live in Jacksonville, Florida. Shout out to Duval, but right now in my hometown of the greater metropolis of Mobile, Alabama. Oh, hey, oh my God. Are hey, you yeah. okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> Bleach wise, are you safe? Okay. Listen, we real country right now. My mama, grandmama, and my sister all stay on the same street. Okay, we real country right now. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was, we were going mobs and Selma. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Got you. And we are also. Um, last week he wasn't on the show with the TJ Chapman show, so I made sure he kind of got this whole thing snowball. Uh, comedian Loose Cannon, what's going on, man? What's going on? What's going on? How y'all doing out there? I'm glad to be on the soapbox today. <laughs> live. Yo, you are live from the Thomas Thomas Baker. Uh, <laughs> they done stole. Look, Loose Cannon trying to make sure that they stole all of our patents. So we he wants the reparations, <laughs> starting with the rights to the bagels. What's going on? <laughs> See, this is all this is all my fault. I told Loose Cannon to support black owned business. I didn't know there was no black owned bagels. Uh, yeah. black owned, but... we are we are definitely getting hey, paid. Hey, I'm hey, listen, I'm all about uh well, you know supporting my bobs as I like to call my black owned businesses. Bobs uh-huh. are up, man. You know, I, I bet hey man, I've been listening to Dr. Claude Anderson, man. And mm. uh, let me tell you, it's important that we start buying black right now you know buy black or move on uh, or get left behind that's what i've been saying so mm, mm, i like that i like nice. that i like thanks, that thanks for making it serious thanks loose we we can't we can't worry about the one you know that that ain't that that, that want to get on the train late you know start doing your thing you start buying black or the one that be like oh yeah yeah forget about that you know it's harry tubman had to force some people with a shotgun to go to free, you see what I'm saying? So, buy black, and if you got to leave somebody behind, leave them behind. And today, uh, put the call in to get called back up. So, so just so everybody's keeping score, Loose Can has been on here for less than five minutes and talk about shooting people, freedom, <laughs> buying business black. Like he came out the gate. I don't know what I don't know what the rest of y'all comedians was doing, but he came right, out the gate. <laughs> this is not TV one tonight. <laughs> Comedian Loose Cannon, Roland Martin. Uh, yeah. 
He got the press, the, the, the little S curl. Oh, my God. With a little Donnie Simpson. With a little Donnie Simpson. Oh, my goodness. A little Donnie Simpson. Hilarious. Listen, let's get started. Lots to talk about this week. A lot of trending topics. Let's go with the uh, uh, the elephant in the room or the most awkward situation, I think, for a couple. So let's talk about Jada and August Alsina. So August Alsina was on, uh, had an interview with, uh, he has an album coming out, and he had an interview with Angela Yee of The Breakfast Club. And he kind of revealed, and I was going to play the clip, but they, I don't want to be flagged like they tried to flag me yesterday, but he kind of revealed like what's something everybody knew in the, in the, within the black community family that he and uh, Jada had a, a relationship. Ale he alleged that they had a relationship and they had relations um, together. And he, you know, said that they have an open relationship, Will and, Will and Jada. And it said that Will Smith gave him permission to love on his love on his wife. You know, so I brought Jen and Gina here so that they can apologize on behalf of the black, <laughs> of black women for this cougar uh, messing this boy's brain up and, and all this stuff. So I brought, that's why they're here. They didn't know that, but they're here <laughs> because all we hear is about how black men are cheating. And look at, but this is all Jada Smith, uh, Pinkett Smith's doing. So I'm going to start with Gina. Um, you have the floor for your first apology and please pass the mic to Jay. <laughs> okay. Here goes my apology, okay? I'm yes. sorry that mm -hmm. you couldn't handle a cougar like me. Uh, oh, see, oh, okay. see that? Okay. Okay. Oh, okay, oh, what so I'm not going to do is mm -hmm. apologize mm. for getting my swoop to do porn <laughs> with a <my> young <laughs> cinnamoni. Okay, what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? He was coming on to me, all right? Mm. So, first of all. You just blame, you, you know, just, just, just slut shame the young boy? Y'all just gonna slut shame the young boy. I'm saying, we Look, I'm weak, okay? You know I'm weak, you know what I'm saying? I had a little thing for Tupac, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've been over here just bounce with, just bounce with, you know what I'm saying? I've been doing all this with you. Ah. And I had to just, you know what I'm saying, take a little dip. It wasn't serious. It was just a dip. It ain't my fault that he got all, you know what I'm saying, in love with me. Like, what's there not to love? I mean, I'm not about to apologize. I'm not about to apologize. <laughs> Um, but wait a minute. Wait, but he was on. He was going on vacations. Like he had it oh. all. See, that's the thing. He was going on vacations with the family. That's how what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's how you gotta get it. You gotta come on now. She's smart. That girl. She DJ Khaled. She's smart. Mm. Okay, she's smart. Her see, loyal, that's see, what I'm trying to tell you. See, Take Jen. This is why. <laughs> Jen, this is why we don't believe women. <laughs> right? Vince, back me up. <laughs> Vince get nervous yeah. when I talk like that. He's like, uh, this oh, is what no. y'all say. We y'all say he's just a friend. Uh -huh. he, oh, he's just you know a it. friend. Okay, we ain't so, the type of friend, but he's a friend. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, right, I right, want you. Right. This is the black you table talk know. conversation. Explain ah, Jada's actions. Come on, Jada. The red gets in trouble. Clearly. Mm -mm. Come on, Jada. Tell him because I. Explain. I'm about to apologize. I, I, I'm gonna well, apologize. apologize. Like Gina, that he couldn't handle it. I apologize that she got her one who couldn't keep his mouth shut. He was too mm. young. That was the thing. You got to find that window to put him in. <laughs> They can be young, you but not too you go. You know what I'm there saying? Twenty eight. Young enough to do what they knew, need to do, but not so young that they don't know how to close their mouth. You see what I'm saying? Mm, <laughs> oh, mm. that's my fault. But it ain't no open yeah. marriages around here. It ain't no hope. Uh -uh. Hell no. It's gonna be. It's gonna be an open hand slap. <laughs> that's what we got there. She said so she got abused. No she didn't. She didn't put him in his. She didn't put him in his place. Is that what it was? Yeah. He. Uh -uh. Yeah, you she didn't check them good enough. You, you friends with one of her, one of her kids, and you came yeah. out here going on vacations. Now you done been vacationing on you her. You vacation You done your little silo money up. Listen, you okay? Silo listen, because mm. apparently, so, listen, Will, Will hadn't been popping since Get Jiggy with it, so Jada needed to straight, but she straight oh. up. She didn't come on back. <laughs> so he yeah, didn't start popping again since he turned 50 now. He just started popping. Listen, yeah. Vince, Vince, so here we are as black men. <laughs> With our body that don't cheat, that don't cheat. Yeah. and we have young brother, young uh, Asalam Alaikum brother August Alcina out here doing the right things, and he's being blackballed in his career because of the rumors that he's Jada Pinkett's side piece. Please, please talk to the young brothers out here. First, first of all, I told y'all Jen had a side dude, man, and she just revealed her whole strategy. So, ain't no fake news about that. Mm. Uh, 
Think about it, I think this whole thing funny because when Will Smith said, this is a story all about how my life got flipped turned upside down, I didn't think he was talking about his wife getting flipped turned upside down. <laughs> how he said life turned flipped upside down. Right. But I yeah. commend my man Will, bro. We got to commend. This is I am legend we talking about, bro. This is Mr. <laughs> Bad Boy himself on what? Mm. And I got to say, for him to be big enough to have an open marriage is commendable. Only thing open in my marriage is my bank account. And if I <laughs> commend him <laughs> for being able to, to accomplish this thing. Now, the only thing that made him bad, like I said, like with Jen, I believe is the case. They ain't had to expose this. Like, why is they telling everybody their business? Like, I thought it was open marriage, not open to the public. You know Come right? on. Like, yeah, but I don't know what though. we got going on. Yeah. But listen, love. I'm, I'm, love, though. You you think you think that's what it is? Or yeah, do you I mean, think it's his I album, think. his album sales? Yo, <laughs> is with what, you? Is, is, is what it is is why he's talking now. I think it's nah, a, I think it's a multiple of things. I think it's his album coming out, and I think that you know he's gonna use this to maybe I don't know if he thought it was gonna bring people to his album because I didn't have the first one. But anyway, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> You know, yeah. Like he should just kept his mouth. Like, why though? Why? Mm. Why? What did he think? We all know they was like swingers and in an open marriage anyway. Like, right? Mm. It's like right. surprise. We're not like, oh my god. It's like, oh my god. It's not J- like J- Giovanni. Is he? Is he wrong? Is 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 open marriages? Is that the new wave? Is that probably how? Is that like a generational thing? Is that the new wave, or do we still want traditional? <laughs> Marriage is a relationship because wait a minute, J- every, all, a lot of women look up to Jada. No, uh, yeah, I feel it, like a lot of women do look up to Jada, but I, I think that they did it because they didn't want people to continue to judge their relationship. So they was just like, let's just put it all out there so we won't feel like we hiding it or that we trying to fake it. You know, let's just put it out there. But I don't think it's a new generational thing. I think actually, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I feel like my grandma, <laughs> my grandma would not be up for it. But our generation is like, be free, be open, you know, date three women and date one man. That's what you should do if it makes you happy. But uh-huh. at the end of the day, I do feel like it. you should, in a relationship, do what makes sense to you instead of cheating in the secret. I really don't, if you're going to do it in the dark, then you might as well just try to find a person who's going to want to do it in the light. That's how mm. I feel about it. Mm. I want y'all to listen to this. I want y'all to pause and listen to this. Because we have someone on the show who habitually makes excuses for women and their and what they do out in public. So Jen, Jess, you have the floor. What, what talk, is your excuse? What is your excuse this time for why we need to support Jada in this Listen, women's suffrage movement? They're grown. They're both grown. <laughs> TJ, you funny. They're grown. They're allowed to do whatever the hell that they want to do. Mm. Everybody already knew that they had an open marriage. August, he's hurt. That's why he's out there putting their business out there because he's feeling some type of way. Or it could be the album sales, who knows? But at the end of the day, this is no secret. Everybody knew what they were doing. So I don't know why everybody's acting on shock. But I don't know why, and and let me say something. I saw this little meme that said, I will paint my house in nail polish before I have an open marriage. I will never, never, Mm. they, no, I can't do that. That's just not not me. I mean, I feel like if like Jada and Will, they're grown, that was their decision, that's what they want to do, that's what makes them happy, then okay, they're grown adults, that's what they want to do. But me, you got me fucked up, never. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, what is it going to take, Fuck Vince, that. for them to apologize? Apologize because they, for what? Apologize for what? Because Will for gave years, his blessing. Oh, come for, on. For years, what? black men have been vilified in the media as the one who she, Okay, what's the difference between Jada Pinkett Smith right now and Future? Future, oh, future mm. is a dog. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> different. <laughs> Let me Let's tell you something. Having babies like everybody. Stop having babies if you're gonna cheat. Don't have no babies. Exactly. <laughs> and, <laughs> if you're, if you, th- it's different with future because if you're in a relationship with somebody and you don't have an agreement to have an open relationship and you mm-hmm. cheat, then you're scum. You're you're a dirt bag. But if you have an agreement, then what is she doing wrong? I'm mm. sorry. TJ, but you right. wrong on this one. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Vince, go ahead. Vince, you have, Vince, you have the floor. Go ahead. And then we'll get to uh, you, Jen. I want to, I, I have to object and throw myself at the mercy of the court, Your Honor, TJ, because <laughs> Giovanna said something about her grandma not being about that life, but they ain't say a damn thing about her granddaddy. And you know, very well, well, like, those probably she probably was proposed to by one of them white dudes she used to work with, like, you know, my wife is into y'all. 
So this ain't nothing new. They've been doing this since slave days. Y'all already know, man. They used to use that man Dingo to go ahead and make that thing go. You know what I'm saying? So let's just keep it real. Second thing is, I really want to ask. I need to ask Jess a question. Jess, uh, baby, you coming from the club and you come from the hospital? What's the wristband? What you? What's fine? Wait a minute. Wow. The clubs is closed, first of all. Second of all, I'm at a resort, so we got to wear, oh, you know, oh, little exclusive. things. So on, let, me, let me flex on you real quick. Oh, <laughs> man, my bad. I just oh, that all she, in her business. All in she, her business. She all is in, I got that, but I'm like, yo, did she just get bailed out? Like, what's going no. on right now? <laughs> 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 she, she's at Country Club COVID because she ain't got no mask on outside. <laughs> Expose herself. She gonna be coughing in a month. She, uh, I'm by myself. Yeah. I'm by myself. I don't gotta wear a mask. If I'm Ooh, by myself, okay. I'm getting exposed. So she's social distance. Okay. Uh, Jen, Jen, uh, Jada Pinkett the, uh, came out and said after August, uh, you know, had this interview, and she denied these allegations. <laughs> she denied these allegations and said she is. She knows that there needs to be some healing. And so she is bringing herself to the Red Table Talk. I want to say, is that not like the police investigating the police? How is <laughs> Jada going to investigate herself on the Red Table Talk? Your, your reaction, Jen, please. Listen, this how, this how show is. She can be, <laughs> but y'all like she needs to keep it G and just not say nothing. I mean, every say time nothing. y'all had an open relationship, he ran his mouth. So, you know, he, he get exiled. From Fun Island, okay, oh and just leave it at that. Mm. Yeah, he can't, get, he can't get a ticket back to this rap. That's it. That's yeah. it. It's a rap, sir. Yeah. But she don't know apologies. And uh, oh. she can heal on her own. Why she got to let oh, everybody okay. know what she healing? Well, I want to know what the, I want to know what the people are saying at, on the street. So live from Save Right, um, comedian Luke Cannon, <laughs> what are we? What are they saying on the street about Will, uh, Jada, and um, and Will? Well, uh, you know, uh, the, the word is people don't believe August. I, I, I you know, I, I've seen. I done seen the meme, you know, uh, about you know it, about you know. Why did you lie in, in August? Okay, so <laughs> they don't believe. They don't believe them. You know, I keep seeing the Jay Z quote. We don't believe you. You need more people. I, they don't believe this, bro. Mm, mm. Thank, thank you. See, I like how Wait. the you might have a, a spot on the soapbox permanently if you're gonna be on the street and on the scene. I like that. Go ahead. Can go I ahead. Say well, why don't people believe him? If it was, if the roles were reversed and this was a woman that was saying that, do you think people would believe her? They Not always do. Perfect. Believe women. <laughs> I'm just saying, we don't know who's Better. telling the truth and who's not. Mm. What do you think Will's reaction was, uh, Vince, when he, when he heard the when he heard the news? He was like, oh, no, oh I, man, oh. No, I, uh, I think that I think Will's reaction was just like it was in Bad Boys. Too. Hey, you ever sleep with a man? No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Old boy came up to the door like, who this nigga? You know what I'm saying? Like. I think Will Smith is chill. Let's be real. Like Will Smith is a black Zen guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh yeah. and all I see, I wouldn't be surprised if he answered the door like, oh, what's up, man? Oh, she in the back. You know what I'm saying? And like walked her back. You need some water? You want some of the drink? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I think that they are at a level that's over the traditional marriage level. And I think that this was indicated when he first came out the house and was like, I'm not trying to make you happy no more. You make yourself happy. And I think mm. myself, I mean, we be happy together. I think that that was a subliminal message. I don't know if y'all saw that, but Will went from being the Fresh Prince of Bel Air to being uh, somehow Tony Robbins when he started doing all these uh, these YouTube videos. <laughs> and, then, and then and then one of them times he started, he, he came out the house. And I remember I used this on my wife. I was like, see, Will Smith ain't trying to make his wife happy. Why I gotta make you happy? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how you raise your voice in your house? <laughs> Said it in a text. Uh, all right. All you use letters. all caps. All lowercase letters. In fact, I might use wing ding font. I didn't even want to know what I was said. But um, yeah, I think I think honestly, like if all joking aside, I think Will and Jada are on another level. I do think that folks don't want to admit that uh, non-traditional relationships do exist and have for a while. And mm -hmm. it, and, it, and a lot of times when you think non-traditional, you go automatically to homosexual and. You know, yeah. other stuff, but these other types of non-traditional relationships have been around for quite a while too. And it's also time that maybe they're exposed and maybe even put into the mainstream. I mean, Mitt Romney, woman. <laughs> what, were, what would Mitt Romney do? 
Welcome to the back. We have, we have um, uh, but he calls himself, he, they call themselves life partners. They don't even call themselves husband and wife and they don't celebrate their anniversary either. So uh, is it is it a cultural thing, Gina? Do we need, do folks just need to mind their business or is this just good tea and good entertainment during a, during a pandemic? Listen, we ain't never gonna mind our business. Let's just keep it real. <laughs> we need to mind the business. Their business, their business is our business. I mean, you are a celebrity, so nigga, your business is my business. Mm. So it's not, it's not cultural because everybody caring. It's caring. That's mm. the people's business. So it's not a cultural thing. It's just, nigga, we want, we nosy as a great. We want to know. <laughs> so because now what I want to know is, I want to know how Willow and Jaden feel about it because Jaden just had on uh, a skirt and had him a little boyfriend. So I'm trying to figure out, does he mind that mama got a boyfriend and does he mind that daddy may possibly have a boyfriend too? Because oh, mm. if they have integrated, if they have integrated and exclusivated, it mm. can be just, it can be just women's. I know it's the men's that have been in that bedroom, so. Oh, oh. <laughs> allegedly. Uh, uh, Go ahead, Jen. So, stop lying. I I Jaden probably jealous of his mama. Like, why you get all the good dudes, my damn? Yeah. <laughs> why? You know what's funny? You know, right now. <laughs> you know what's funny is as soon as I saw the outfit that August Alcina had on, I said, oh, he about to tell. He, he about, about to, to tell. <laughs> I saw that hat and that hairdo. I said, "Oh, he about to, he about to tell something." Tell all the tea. Yeah, yeah, he about to, he about to tell. But you know why this really happened? My opinion is this happened because um, until Jada Pinkett does right by Ti, ain't nothing in her life gonna go right. <laughs> ain't you know nothing what? in her life gonna go right. She tried to expose Ti and rip him in the uh, in the media, and now the karma has come on Jada Pinkett Smith. Expeditiously. Expeditiously. <laughs> Expeditiously. <laughs> yeah, well, she should have thought about that before she misarticulated the perpendicular medulla oblongata. Exactly. Hey, baby. Can I, can I have some bad time? Absolutely. Um, look, so, so we'll see. There's supposed to be a red table talk um, episode <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, on Friday, so we'll we'll see what happens, and we'll we'll keep everybody on tabs with that. Did everybody catch the BT awards? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like, yes, teacher, I did. everybody do their homework? No? All right, moving I, on. I, I, I liked it. So whatever y'all got to say about it. Did you I, like it? I like I enjoyed it. Okay, what what was your what was your, I want to know like what was your favorite part? Anything that stood out to you? You know what? Because it was woke. It was woke. It was a woke BET Awards virtually. Well, first of all, it was a Walt VT Awards, but I will say that if they can, people can sit up here and watch this goddamn Zoom, don't say shit about the BET Awards because that's all it was, was a big ass goddamn Zoom meeting. <laughs> but I did like the performances. Like, I like how the performances were like videos. They were, it was mm -hmm. dope. Now, Amanda, you know, um, we can, you know, we didn't have to change so many times because it's like, girl, we know you at home, but. I mean, so some stuff like, eh. but the performances though and the tribute, um, to me, low key, it was like it was pretty dope for the situation. I like that they didn't cancel it; that they still had it, you know, just in spite of you know the protesting and you know the COVID and whatnot. But they kept it black. They kept it black on this one. This was the blackest one. This was the blackest. I think mean, this is the blackest. Even Beyonce showed up. Now you know. And Beyonce was gonna get listen. Beyonce was gonna give that speech whether it was live or not. She is not stepping foot in the, the BET Awards <laughs> <She's not laughs> anymore. Give it to me now because it's the only time y'all gonna see me. So you better give it to me when y'all because I'm not coming back. I'm not coming. I, listen, back. I know the Beehive gonna be upset with me, but she always got this glazed over look in her eyes. Which is, listen, I just want y'all to to vote, vote please. You know, like I, I. I I know, I know she's the queen and everything, but yeah, but I don't know. She's got that glazed over look in her eye, like some, some just ain't ain't there, ain't there. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't Maybe know. She would, 
It's not. Maybe we should. Maybe she was with August August Alicina too, or whatever. I don't know. Oh, I, mean, I can't wait till that Alistina. comes out. Not Alicina. Not Alicina. 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 August. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I gotta Google it. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm. Listen, I'm, I'm, listen. I, I want to know what the people on the street are saying that Ray Ray's rib shack. Uh, <laughs> uh, loose cannon. Loose loose cannon. What are they saying on the street about the BET Awards? Hey man, listen. You know, a lot of folk ain't even watching. I'm one of them, so I, you know, they, <laughs> they say that. You know, they, they didn't watch it. Okay, yeah. all right. Bet. But I will say this. You know, I, I I done seen you know other entertainers talk about how a lot of times we over by you know like you said when you was on our show. A lot of times we think white ice is colder, so we we overvalue award shows like the uh the, the Grammys, the Emmys and stuff, we got to start really placing value on our own award shows. So, you know, shame on shame on me and anyone else that didn't watch the BT. <laughs> Thank you, Luce Cornell West. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Luce Cannon, you are becoming a star on this show because we need commentary, uh, comedian commentary from the 19th, the 60s civil rights movement, live from <laughs> Edmund's Pettimus, Ed, the bridge. He's going live, live reporting. So I appreciate that, man. I appreciate all these sentiments. I do want to talk. I know uh, we brought you all here, uh, all joke, you know, not all jokes aside, but we want to know more about you as a as a comedian, Gina G. I'm gonna start with you, and we can guess go around the horn with it. What made you all? Where'd you want to go? With, go into comedy and. Uh, yeah, let's just start with that. What made you want to go into comedy, and, and when did you know that you were funny? Okay, 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 okay. Let's start it off. Man, this is your girl Gina G. Yeah, um, originally from Decatur, Georgia, but I was raised in Inglewood, California. Um, I started doing comedy as a wait. I was a waitress at the J Spot, which is a um, J Anthony Brown's Comedy Club in L.A. Uh, okay. It was slow one night. You know what I'm saying? They were like, "Let's get some of the staff up." It was probably like eight people in there. So the bartender went up. The cook went up. They was like, Gina, you go up. And I was like, I don't know what the, you know, shit. I, I was supposed to be like Beyonce slash Keisha Cole. I was supposed to be a little entertainer. I was supposed to be like, yeah, I was supposed to be a little bit, like a little bit, but I could dance. So I was going to miss it, you know? Uh, but that didn't work. So, um, no, so I went up one night. I did really well. I impersonated like G Fang. It was a couple of comedians that used to come in there all the time. Mm -hmm. And then um, one night, Jay was there and he was like, yeah, I heard I got a funny waitress, a waitress that thinks she's funny and shit. And I was like, in the middle of delivering drinks and shit, like, I, please don't call me. Please don't call me. <laughs> please. Like, I just want to deliver these martinis and live my life. And mm. he called me on stage, man. And like, I turned my apron around and that first look, that first laugh, I was like, oh, like this shit is bad. <laughs> But I didn't take it seriously probably until like maybe like the last five or six years. I really kind of just, you know, because it's a craft. It's nothing to play with, you know, for people that think they can just do comedy, from people that can, from the internet that think they can just go and do stage. This shit is not a game. Um, mm -hmm. You got to show respect to the game or it's not going to respect you. Um, but once I won Florida's Funniest Female, it kind of just, from there, I kind of just used that shit and was moved a couple places and moved around and, you know, mm. so... I've been funny all my life. I've been the one at the barbecue. I've been the one. My mom used to put me in front of people and make me dance and shit. Do the dance. Do the do. The oh, dance. Okay. <laughs> I've been doing this shit for forever. You know what I'm saying? So now I don't know what else to do. I'm out here now with this quarantine. I'm trying to sell sea moss, Nutriverse, ISO <laughs> TV, bitch weed. Um, I'm doing hair again. Um, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm selling, I'm selling hair wraps. Hey. Uh, I feel you. Uh, Vince, Vince, how'd you, how'd you, uh, how'd you get into comedy? And how, when did you know you were funny, man? Uh, before we even get started, I just want to make sure Gina is okay and R. Kelly yes. ain't in there. <laughs> we gonna scroll. We gonna scroll. Oh, this is also a, a helper comedian hotline. So if you have, <laughs> if you could spare two bucks to, for forty to cents a day, you could save Gina G from R. Kelly's closet. Please, 
trapped in the closet, like for real, right now. She got the whole wardrobe. Ain't even clean the background. You know how you get ready. You know how you know how you finna get ready to go somewhere. You try to put on everything, just keep throwing shit everywhere. And she just like, you know what? Oh, that friend, I gotta get on this TJ Cole thing. Uh -uh. Shut up. Close the door, baby. Close the door. I bet you that closet ain't even a closet. That's probably your back wall. That's probably if you turn around the camera, that's your kitchen. That's your kitchen, bro. That's your kitchen. No! No, you just gonna keep all your products in there, bro. Look at that. Oh. It's like MLA nightmare, bro. Where, where oh. you keep the Murray K products? Where you keep the Murray K products? Oh, my God. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> that's my man, that's my man, that's my man, that's my man. I'm just messing with you. I'm just saying, there's a whole outside, and you chose R. Kelly's closet to do your. You know, <laughs> you know, there's like a, there's a vir Gina, there's a virtual background at, uh, 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 option on the Zoom. If you just go down I and hit on the right, you hit that more. Yeah. This is my favorite. I, I, I just want to make sure you're okay. <laughs> I believe black women. I just want to make sure you're okay. That's all. I'm, I'm, about, to I'm about to mute because I'm about to cut your ass out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> don't, you, don't you put that even on me, Ricky Bobby. Out. All right, we'll say, look, look. All right, well, I got started just like Gina. I mean, most of us ended up going into comedy because we got fired off our job. Mm. And comedy don't comedy don't require no background check. <laughs> or drugs. Yeah. Like, right, you know let's go ahead and run that. Yeah, I mean, and, uh oh, whoa, loose cannon. Oh, I'm sorry, I got red light syndrome. So <laughs> <laughs> he's on uh, to his next checkpoint. <laughs> well, I feel like he drove down our nine at the week at the peak of the week. Like, <laughs> anyway, anyway, so yeah, uh, you know, after after you know going to fam, I got a, I, I was actually voted my freshman year most humorous at Florida A and M. And um, okay. that was that was an indicator to me that there was something there. But I still had dreams of being an engineer after I became an engineer and realized that wasn't worth nothing but sitting behind a desk all day and getting two weeks <laughs> off a year. I was like, all right, man, let me let me look at some more things that could help. You. And then one of my jobs was to train the incoming employees. And when I used to do it, I made it a point to make it entertaining. And mm. then uh, I didn't realize until like halfway through my, you know, that 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 tenure that my people was watching me like the other, the other, you know, employees. It was like, yo, dude, you was hilarious. And people started coming to the training. Like it was a show. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna start trying to y'all see And that's when some people kept saying, like, listen, bro, you in the wrong business. Like, you should really consider doing mm -hmm. something. But you know, with this not something you thought of before, you know, because I thought I was gonna be a rapper. When I was at FAM, I was in the studio. I thought I was gonna I wanted to I say thought something. so too. I thought I was gonna be yeah, a rapper yeah, too. Yeah. We all we all we all had that family yeah, home. Boy. We all was in our homeboy closet sitting there with the egg crates on the wall, making CDs and all fruity loops. We know what it is, <laughs> bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh so my thing is uh but the real thing, just to kind of pivot a little bit. Yeah. Um and I ain't trying to like mess up the mood, but I lost No, uh, you good. Uh, 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 my best friend uh, mm. that I went to that I went to fam you with was uh, well, like one of my best friends that uh, when I moved down to Florida the first dude I, one of the first people I met he went missing in 2000 right January mm. 18 2000 he'd been missing and he wanted to be so famous so bad and I used to be like bro we got minds we could be you know engineers and doctors he's like nah bro but look man if freaking Chris Cross can do it if ABC can do it we can do it so when he went missing right yeah and when I finally realized he wasn't coming back I kind of felt that the only way I can really get the message of him being missing out is to have a voice. Cause I used to like be like, yo, y'all ain't looking for my boy and nobody would care. So mm. I was like, well, if I get famous and I mentioned Greg Brooks, Roy G Brooks, Google him, he's still missing to this day, 20 years mm. now. Mm. If, I, if I can get famous, maybe somebody will listen to me and they'll start taking these charges of missing black, black boys seriously and missing black people period or missing people period. Yeah. And so my whole ordeal after I realized there was a there was actually a potential to not only gain income but to utilize your platform for something good, that's when I realized, listen, my goal isn't to be famous, to be known. My goal is to be big and famous, to have influence so that I can put shine a spotlight on things that need to have a spotlight on. Like my boy Greg Brooks, like putting out there that Timmy Time was one of the dopest human beings on the face of this earth and he got and he and he left us too soon because mm -hmm. healthcare is is some bullshit. Yeah. And uh, and also all of the things that you and me and Miles and other folks that we know been fighting for in the street, TJ. We ain't gonna go there right now because it's blackout. We cool. We comedy. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's basically my story. You know what I'm saying?
<laughs> Jen, Jen, what about what about you? Was you marching in Selma and then you realized that you hey, know what? You <laughs> Listen, I did not. I was supposed to be doing hair. Okay. I, was to be hair I was supposed to be a sign language interpreter. I was supposed to be a news broadcaster. So yeah, did all this college and just left with an AA in general studies, right? Okay. So, I, literally, I was like, don't ask me nothing specific, just general stuff, okay? Just general, just pop culture. So, so I end up. Um, I used to be funny, but I was like mean and quiet in school. Like I fight you. And stuff like that. Like I used to be the little mischievous one. It was this dude I couldn't stand, so I took you know the little stuff that be in your in your uh, shoes that say "Do not eat that little pack." Yeah. <laughs> it's drink, right? Well, you I, put I, it in I, his I, drink. Turn my life around. Uh, I feel some judgment. Just close your mouth while you're in the spot, okay? <laughs> so I um I ended up doing stuff like at church and stuff like that, right? And um somebody was like, um, I have a friend who's a comedian and he's gonna put you on the show. And I was like, I don't do jokes. Cause I think I heard Steve Harvey in an interview and he was like, I have to write my jokes. It's job, it's a job, it's work. And I was like, I have a job. So but I ended up doing my first <laughs> show 10 years ago. And okay. I was like, all right, that's just something on my bucket list. But then I end up like a year and a half after that, I went to a comedy conference in LA and fell in love with it. So I've been going strong for like eight years and I still have my full-time job. I've been on it 20 years, but mm. it was flexible and I can kind of, my boss cool. I mean, I could tell her I need to take my pet llama to the vet and she'd be like, all right, cool. So it give me the liberty to kind of do what I need to do on the yeah. side. Yeah, but I love yeah, it. I, like I ain't never been on drugs, but it ain't nothing like that stage and that laugh, that crowd, that energy. Ugh, I ain't nothing. Heard. Right now. Heard. Loose cannon, how'd you, how'd you really? get into comedy when you know you were funny? Man, listen, it, it's funny. I, I got a funny story about me getting into comedy because Vince was there. I don't know if you remember Vince, but uh, I, I, you know, I, you know, I, it, it had been a thought in my mind, but it, it was never like a real strong passion of mine to be a stand up. People always wanted me to do it, they always told me to do it, but I refused because I just had a different respect of stand up comedy as an, as an art form. I always believed, and I'm, and I'm correct that it was a difference between being funny in a conversation and being funny on stage or what I call commercial fun, to the point where somebody can sell people a ticket to come see you and them people not be upset that they paid to come see you, right? Mm. So I I never thought I was commercial funny, but one night a friend of mine, uh, Jeremy Webster, he put, a, put together a comedy show and the headliners that night was Vince Taylor and Brody Love. And right before okay. he put them on stage, I remember him saying, y'all ready for your next comedian? And uh, everybody was like, yeah. You know, now I came to the comedy show just as a spectator, you know, and, mm -hmm. and to support my own boy or whatnot. He was like, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage. Loose cannon, everybody. And at the time, I'm like, bro, I, uh, you know, I'm not coming. Out. I'm not no comedian. He was like, you know, no, come on up. You know, I'm a, you know, we're going to keep clapping until you finally come up there. So finally, I, I came up there, had a good set for my very first time ever. And uh, then, you know. <laughs> Vince was like, uh. And, and what then, happened, Vince? Was that, that's not how you recall? I just know when he came up to the stage, introduced his Luke Cannon, he was like, listen, it's comedian Luke Cannon, like a pimp named Slickback. You say all three of the words, yeah, you're real mad about, about it. That's, that's, that's me not. You know, I'm comedian Luke Cannon, like a tribe called Quiz, a pimp named Slickback. You say the whole thing. That's all three words. When you look for me on social media, you got to type in comedian loose can. All right? But you know, I ain't want to say know how to step on a joke, man. God damn, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but, but, you know, a few months later, I had saw, uh, you know, I saw, I was at the improv watching D.L. Euclid. I seen a flyer for a, uh, a comedy class, and I took the class, man, and learned the science of joke writing. And I just been, I've been taking off ever since, man. And and I got people like Vince Taylor and, and Gina G and a couple of handful of other people to thank for that as well, you know, because mm -hmm. when I first started, they, you know, brought me along and put me on shows and and took me places. You know, one of the first people I ever went out on the road with was Gina G. But we got some good story. Oh, uh, uh, okay. The best story. The best story. <laughs> well, we this gonna get we gonna get this, my boy. We definitely gonna get to some of those stories. I want to hear some of those stories. But Jess, you had a question for the for the panel? 
Yeah, I just want to know. Yeah, yes. I just want to know who are some of y'all's influences. Um, Vince, I'll start with you because you got a real interesting background over there. So I don't know if you know that man back there influences you. So we'll start with you. <laughs> oh, oh, for real? You gonna you gonna try to roast me after you just got out? Like <laughs> <laughs> we can still revoke your bail. Oh don't, don't throw no smoke now. We don't I'm just playing, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. But um I mean like in all honesty, yeah, I'm I'm a huge Marvel fanatic. I'm a huge comic book guy. Uh my family mm-hmm. is uh I, I, I'm the outlier and I feel like in my family. My sister is a medical doctor. My brother and my other sister are both college basketball coaches. And I do comedy. I was the nerd of the family. You know what I'm saying? I played basketball, football, all that. But I really, in secret, I really like to, like, go home that night and read up on Civil War, the Marvel Civil War, not, you know, the 18th. All right, well, that too, you know what I'm saying? Got you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I, if, with regard to comedy, in all honesty, man, there was three people that stood out the most to me. And and hopefully, I don't know if y'all will back me up on this, Luce, uh, Jan, and Gina, but when I grew up watching comedy, I watched black comics. I didn't, I did Absolutely. not. And I'm not trying to diss white comics. Yeah. You know, but I, even to this day, like, when I try to watch, other than, like, um maybe Jerry Seinfeld, but when I watch just, like, Premium Blend, I'm just like, I don't, I don't get. So my influences was Martin Lawrence, uh, mm. because not only did Martin Lawrence know how to host the show, but he knew how to take that energy and transform it into uh, a TV show, movies, mm-hmm. different characters, and he was just laugh aloud funny. He wasn't not trying to do politics, nothing like that. He's just like, look, I'm just a funny dude outright, just off script. Then Chris Rock was my next one, because Chris Rock knew how to take a subject that was awkward, but make it funny. When he said, look, there's a problem out there, and we got <laughs> two different kinds of people. We got black people and niggas. The <laughs> niggas has got to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, that's, that's something that we've been saying like in the community in certain different er- languages for like for the longest, but he was the first one to say it on stage and get us like almost a standing ovation. You know what I'm saying? Because that's some real stuff, but he made it funny. You know what I'm saying? And, he yeah. was, and he's also the one who said a man is only as faithful as his, as his options, Will Smith. So, you know, you might want to listen to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, last, the, last, the, last, the, last, the last one, and then I, I'm going to turn it over, is Cedric the Entertainer. Not only because he and I are both from St. Louis, but because Cedric, unlike all comedy uh, comedians, and and everybody on this call that, that is on, like the comedians that are on this call do this, Cedric knows that whatever it is that you have at your disposal, Whatever you can do to entertain, use it mm. when you're on stage. You know, he Got dances, it. he does sound bits, he does regular jokes, he'll do a whole choreographed routine, just like Sinbad used to do. But he's not gonna be like, oh, I can do this, but that's not for the stage. Like Gina, like, I don't know if, if 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 you haven't seen a live Gina G show, you missing out. Cause Gina, I have I it, know, man. I have it, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Gina, I know I, I, I studied Gina and mm. Gina does dances that she used to do when she was like eight, nine years old, stuck <laughs> in front of the TV on Saturday morning watching a uh, Teen <laughs> Summit with Ananda. <laughs> <laughs> Ananda Lewis. Yeah, she, like, she, like, she, like, she like memorized all, like, all the TLC moves, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, you know, <laughs> and like, hey. she knows, instead of being like, oh, that was something I used to do back in the day, she's like, no, nah, that's funny. I can do that right now. And folks yeah. relate to that. Another mm. thing about Loose Cannon, Loose Cannon is one of the most fearless yeah. comics out, and he don't get the respect he deserves because he don't wait for nobody to put him on. He makes his own joint, man. Mm. And he really, he really gets, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say this. Loose Cannon gets shit on in the Orlando comedy community unjustifiably really? so. And that's because he don't want to sit back and do things the traditional way and wait 10, 15 years to get on. Be like, look, here's a way I can get on. I'm gonna try this avenue. I'm gonna try this avenue. I'm gonna try this avenue. I'm gonna sit there and wait for y'all. I remember when me and Luce Cannon did a show. Well, actually, he did. Well, we were up at the improv. And, um, and it was, uh, who was it, Luce Cannon? It was, uh, it was, um, oh boy, the, uh, the Who Raised You? Who raised you? TK Kirkman. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. And like, we were sitting there like, oh, TK, hey, let's get a picture. Hey, hey, bro, what's up? Hey, let's follow each other. Luce Cannon went up, was like, hey, um, Hey, I just was uh, wondering uh, if I could just get on your podcast. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, who is you? He was like, you know, I'm, I'm comedian Luke Cannon. It's all three words, like a tribe called. Like he went, like this was how he introduced himself. 
And I was like, oh my God. But then my back line was like, but he's fearless. He's not afraid. And like, what if he said yes? You yeah, know, yeah. I'm not gonna get fed. And then Jen, I don't know if you know this or not, but Jen will make you laugh for an hour straight. You will die, fall out your seat, and then won't even realize until you went home. Like, oh, she didn't even curse. She didn't say nothing dirty. You know what I'm mm. saying? She can go in front of a uh, in front of any crowd. So all of these comics influenced me as well since I've been doing it. Nice. But yo, I mean, but everybody has their own particular like uh, yeah. way of going about it, and I think that's right. what's beautiful about us. That's right. what's up. Who's the other uh, your uh, uh, Gina and Jen? Uh, Luciano, who are y'all influenced, like Jen just said? And like, who's on y'all Mount, Mount Rushmore of comedy? Well, uh, me, uh, uh, a guy that's on my Mount Rushmore of comedy that I don't think he get the level of respect that he truly deserves, you know, um, is D.L. Hughley. Mm. You know, I, I think D.L. Hughley For, is Former a guest on the soapbox, D.L. Hughley, for you guys. Former oh! guest on the soapbox, yes, yes, so please. <laughs> <laughs> please. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, but continue. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I think I, you know I've seen D.L. Hughley just in a casual conversation mm -hmm. take the most uncomfortable stuff, a real issue, and, mm -hmm. and make it good comedy. Like for example, I, I followed D.L. Hughley on Instagram, and one day after the shooting at the Waffle House or whatnot, he goes on Instagram and he says, "It's amazing to me." how they can apprehend these white man shooters that they know got a gun. If only he had a cell phone, mm. right? I mm. fall over laughing because I know what he's, I get it. You know, when it's a white boy with a gun, they can arrest him and get the gun from him. But as a black man, I reach for a driver's life or a cell phone, they gonna light yeah. me up. But then yeah. you can take something serious and controversial like that and make it a really good, comedy joke or routine like another example is uh one night him and dave chappelle was leaving a restaurant and tmz ran up on him they was like dl what do you think about r kelly and michael jackson and uh he was like well i think they're good i think they i think they're really good entertainers but horrible babysitters you know <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I, i'm just i'm a, I, I, I admire dl because he's 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 very intelligent, very articulate, uh -huh. and extremely witty. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Jen, Gina, what's your, your influences? For being the of comedy that he really Come on, is. Jen, go ahead, Jen. All right. <laughs> Jess, what happened? Time. Jess got attacked? Jess got attacked from the bar. COVID oh mosquito. I need to get up out of here. Let's go. <laughs> For real, <laughs> the West, the West now just came and got Jess. Listen, oh, that shit was big as hell. Ah, oh my God. Listen, sorry, I, go ahead. Jen, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Jen. Go ahead, Jen. I think my all-time favorite, uh, Bernie Mac. I love, 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 yes. love, love, love mm -hmm. Bernie Mac. R.I.P. Yes. Stage presence, um, even the story behind the first time he came on Def Jam was like, I ain't scared of y'all emails, like how yeah, that came yeah. about. <laughs> um, I love him. Um, and then I really like uh Roy Wood Jr., not just because we both from Alabama, but I like Roy Wood Jr. Ah, and the stuff that he way. talks about, um, and yeah, fam you, he's from fam you, mm. um, and the stuff that he talks about and the way he um the way he presents his material. And then I think Dave Chappelle, um I was mm. waiting. Dave's yeah, Chappelle. I was waiting to hear Dave's name. Oh, You're right, Dave. Dave. Oh, he on some other right now. Like even like the time that he took off after he stopped his show, like for twelve years, he didn't do stand up. But even learning that, you know, he would go out in a park with a microphone and just do random shows. You know, mm -hmm. so he was still working on his material. The fact that he didn't release like four or five, um, you know, comedy specials in the last what two two years, like he's just on fire. So those are my absolute three favorites. Oh, that was some good ones. Y'all got some good ones, huh? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay, well, shit. Let me just get in mine. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to ask you guys. Um, hold on, hold on. Let, let uh, Gina's going to do give her answer, and then Giovanni's oh, going to have a question. I'm sorry. I'm going to be queen. It's going to be queen because Luz can in events. Oh, my God. Okay, so look. Uh, <laughs> Martin Lawrence, you guys, and I'm going to say Cat Williams. Let me tell y'all something about Cat Williams. Cat mm. Williams can literally be talking to us right now and go on stage and just keep talking. Like, there's no, <laughs> he don't have to turn on nothing, turn off nothing. He ain't got to do nothing. 
Cat Williams is super, super, super dope. Pimp Chronicles is probably one of my hands down favorite stand up specials. Um, um, Cedric the Entertainer, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys. I, I never knew I was gonna be a comedian, so I didn't watch. I watched comedy, but I didn't watch it in the way that I watched it when I started being a comedian. That makes sense. Mm, yeah. So now it, it's different. So now I have like a list of people, like eat, like delay, um, just like even rate events. Like it's just so many other people that shape and mold you once you get in this business. That the average um, mainstream comic is like, they cool, but I know some real funny ass, real ass yeah. people. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. yo, these niggas is funny. So it's just yeah. you know Tony Baker. I mean, it's just some. But you know, that's all. Go on. <laughs> like, y'all get it. Y'all yeah, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Jabani. Go ahead, Jay. Oh, okay. So what about, you know, we don't really hear all the the bad stories, but do y'all have any comedy um booking horror stories? <laughs> Well, Vic probably, Vic probably has the most. Vince probably has the most of them, honestly, out of everybody. I really think Vince probably has the most because mm -hmm. Vince to me will give you a chance. You see what I'm saying? So like, he heard that your ass don't pay nobody. Pay me though. So I think let Vince answer this because Vince, I know Vince didn't probably fought 18 people. <laughs> Bitch, that's your baby sipping, y'all. I can neither yeah. confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, <laughs> Jen, did you say yes? Jess, you, Jen, you said this. So there's people that be letting y'all go on. Y'all don't ask for the money up front or ask? Well, now I do. It depends on the person. If it's a comedian, I know somebody like, if it's a comp, if it's Vince, if Vince hit me up like, hey, this is a situation, I'm there. I already know I'm good. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it had been certain, like, you know, I started out doing comedy at churches. And the first time I got burned was a church. We're going to pay you. We're going to do this. I was filling oh. in for somebody. He couldn't do it. So he was like, Jen, can you go here? I was like, all right, cool. I was like two years into doing comedy. So maybe I was greener than a blade of grass. We get there. Well, you know, we was doing a fundraiser for the for the building fund. But you know, oh, you need no. to pay me when I got here. Oh, oh my like, goodness. Well, you know, what I'm going to Listen. She was like, I'm going to count the money. So you go on over here and get something to eat. You know it's steak over here. Now I'm going to eat your steak. Right. And your potatoes. <laughs> and your broccoli. And I'm going to get some of this sweet tea. Don't, but don't I still want my money. Don't right. tell me with a good time. Don't 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 me. Me. Yeah. This was a clean eight years ago. Still have not got paid. The la One of the ladies who was there, her mom had to die. The lady was like, can you come do jokes at my mama's funeral? I was like, girl, wow. I need mm. And then the lady was like, yeah, you come now. I'll pay you at the funeral. Y'all know what? Don't even worry about it. Don't even, worry. <laughs> I don't even worry. And it was a church. I was like, now come on. Yo, I wanna <laughs> yo, I, come on. Yo, so. I really want to know. I don't know if y'all seen Dave Chappelle's uh uh eight minutes and forty six seconds special on uh was it was it no it was on YouTube or Netflix? Was it on Netflix? YouTube, 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 YouTube right? And so I always ask comedians that we interview, uh or little improv comedy club has been very uh very uh, good to us here at the Soapbox, allowing us to interview comedians like like DL, like Godfrey, uh, uh, Tony Rock, and stuff like that. So um, I want to always ask, I always ask everybody, how do y'all toe that fine line between uh, actual political commentary that you're giving on stage and actually being being funny? Because I know within this sensitive culture, you can lose half the room by the depending on what you're saying. So how do y'all toe the line when y'all talk about that? Go ahead, I'll go start with you, Gina. I don't do politics. At all? Mm-mm. So you that it just is that be is it a strategic reason why? Or are you just like, no, I'm not versed no, in it? It's or just you... Because it's not something that I talk about on, on a regular. Got it. Got it. You know, like it's not it's not in my regular conference. Like, like, no, nah, no. Nah. Like, so politics, religion. You know, certain things I just, I, you know, so it's not, it's no real reason behind it. It's just something that I don't really get into, period. Like, I don't get, I don't play space. I won't even sit down because I don't get into it. And I don't feel like, you know what I'm saying, reneging it and somebody cut me and stabbing me. You know what I'm saying? So I just don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't get into it. She no, crashes. I, I feel you. Go, go ahead, Vince. Uh, first of all, yeah, Gina's a terrible space partner. Don't ever, she will have you cutting. Everything for it. She, she don't know what the hell she's doing. She don't even know what the book is. That's real. Uh, but uh, for me, it's a little different now. I don't talk 
politics as it pertains to presidential politics, because Gina's right. You will imme- you will immediately see that stiff arm right there, like yeah. You just did the I turned it to somebody. <laughs> I'm glad that that was on camera. I'm so mad. That, can we edit that? We're about to scroll the domestic violence hotline. <laughs> no, 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 um, I don't, presidential politics, religion, things like that are going to split the room. And the last thing you want to do is have some angry Trump supporter not laugh at your jokes just because they realize you voted for Obama. You know what I'm saying? So you really want to get all of the laughs. But I do go in on Black history. Like, I do not parse words when it comes to educating folks about Toussaint Overture and the Haitian Revolution. I do not parse words when I talk about how Black women are the most disrespected people on the face of this earth because women talk about how bad they got it. Black people talk about how bad they got it. But what if you a black woman? Come on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just do the math. And so I say these things, but the fine line comes with this, TJ. It, yeah. DL, I learned from DL, like um, uh, DL and a few others. Mm-hmm. You can get away with saying things if you set it up right. Yeah. There's an art to it, right? Like for instance, I t- what, I, what, what, I don't want to cut you. I, I don't want to cut you off. Uh, nah, one, one, nah, real quick, because Gina, I know Gina's got, I know Gina's got to run. I want to make sure everybody gets her social media before she has to break out. So, Gina, if you could just tell everybody your social media real quick, so where yes, they can find yes, you. Yes. I apologize, yeah. you guys. I just started my own little show on IG, and um, this is only my third show, and I'm trying to be on time. So, got you. You can find me at uh, <laughs> Gina G Two Funny. That's G I N A G. The number two. Funny, you can follow me. You can, like I said, you get your sea moss, you can get your Nutriburst, you can get your ISO tea, you can get your hair, <laughs> whatever you need. Just inbox me, I got you. If you need a pressing curl, I can get you on the side as well. Um, but yeah, man, <laughs> please, so bold. please have me back. I would love to come back. Yes, yes, you please will be back. come back. And yes. I would love to say this is so real, real quick, it's so small. So, Vince Taylor, y'all, is the most solid. I've got more bookings from Vince. Then I've mm-hmm. gotten from anybody uh-huh. else. Facts. I'm not giving him while he's here because we miss Timmy time. So I got to give Vince his flowers. Vince, I love you, you little sweaty pits boy. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> it was so nice to meet you, beautiful queens. You too, TJ, Jen. But whenever y'all want me back, just let me know. Just and come. I'm just come. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, absolutely. I'm following absolutely. you right now. Absolutely. Hey. I'm following all of y'all. Appreciate okay. you. Vince, Vince, I, Vince, I think that's a good, I think that's okay, a good segue because Vince was talking about uh black women and how they're being disrespected and protecting them. And then also be you aren't just saying it, you actually you're about it. So go back to finishing your point, man. I, I'm sorry. I wanted to make sure that people didn't miss out on where to find Gina uh Gina G. So go ahead and finish your point, my man. Well, I'm glad you let her finish that because that is the point. You know what I'm yeah. saying? She needs to be yeah. out there. We want Gina to be out there. We want Gina to be out there leading the cause. Because let's be real. What? Let's be real. Like, Black women, mm-hmm. if they ran everything, there wouldn't be no problems. <laughs> can we all agree on that? Can we just yes, agree we on can. that? Like, if, yes, we if can. If Black we women can. ran everything, there would be no problems. Uh, now, I would be a little concerned because they probably would make cheating illegal. And there would be a lot of <laughs> Men don't cheat, and uh, you know. Yeah, they have they have a whole bunch of side. They have a harem of yeah. side dudes. Just yeah, the <laughs> home, the home to prison pipeline would be real. Is all I'm saying. Like, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> It'd be a whole other thing. Uh, but yeah, I think I think that that's that's like the one thing that, like I told you from the get, like I didn't get yeah. in comedy. I, I didn't grow up trying to be a comedian, but I knew I had something to say, right, TJ? Like you yeah. have something to say. Everybody else on here is like, so comedy for me is more of a vehicle to get my word out. So it, like, how dare me get out there in front of people and not slip in education with the entertainment? That's the same mm-hmm. thing you do with the kids with the Black History Project. So the way I like to educate is through humor. So it may seem like a set, but it's really a lecture. I'm just making it funny. And that's gotcha. what I took away from doing those training classes. So it is possible to, to mix politics with fun. That's what's up. That's what's up. Hey, listen. Uh, I know we have a, a few a few more stories before we uh, that we want to touch on. We have. Uh, did y'all see this? Terry Crews, right? So I'm gonna share my screen. Oh, Terry, Terry Crews oh, yeah. this week. Terry Crews came out with a tweet. I don't know if everybody saw this. He said, 
and I know we're talking about politics, mix of politics and comedy, but Terry Clues is a comedian and he's been a host. So uh, de- he said, defeating white supremacy without white people creates black supremacy. Uh, equality is the truth. Uh, like it or not, we are all in this together. I think that's the other tweet. I'm looking for the tweet that he said something even more stupid than that. I'm sorry. Give me one second. So basically what he said was, I'm looking for it. Oh, there it is. He said, if you are a child of God, you are my brother and my and sister. I have family of every race, creed, and ideology. We must ensure Black Lives Matter doesn't morph into Black Lives Better. Uh, I want to hear from the comedian. What, what are y'all? What are y'all thoughts on it? And Jen, I'm gonna start with you. What are your thoughts when <laughs> Terry, Terry <laughs> Cruz? <laughs> because he's okay, got a lot so, of criticism from Black Twitter. He's been dragged on. Oh, he's I'm on sure. Roland Martin Listen, talking about he don't Black care. Twitter being... don't play. Black Twitter yes. does not play any mm-hmm. games ever. Um. Okay. So I kind of got the first part of the whole. You know, I have people of different. I love you, my brother, sister. I get that. Mm-hmm. But we're not saying black lives are better. We need y'all to understand that our that they matter. Period. Mm. So it's not about we not we never said all lives don't matter. We don't say right. blue lives. We ain't say none of that. We saying y'all need to acknowledge that black lives matter because at this point we becoming an endangered species. So I feel mm-hmm. like I get what he's saying, but I also, I feel like he's he's straddling the fence. Like he walking the line. Like he really want to say something, but then he don't want to make nobody mad. He don't want to make nobody mad. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I feel yeah. like. You he's soft shooting shoot a bit, yeah. Yeah, like you, like my grandmama say, you're teeter-tottering. Which one? You either mm. in or you out. What, what you doing? Yeah, mm. you lukewarm. So like, say what, say what you say. I yes. said what I said, but we don't understand what you said. Either you in or you out, sir. Mm. Yeah, I, don't, mm. I, don't, I, don't, I ain't feeling that, sir. I'm what do you think? To, I'm gonna need you to delete your Twitter account for, look, we need to put you in Twitter jail for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> what do you, what do you, what do you think about what do you think about events? Because he was on um <laughs> Roland Martin talking about he don't care being like he it needed to be it needed to be said. Did it need to be said? <laughs> people are saying, all right, I'm not saying I said this, but people are saying <laughs> people are calling him Terry Coon. I didn't call him Terry Coon. I heard somebody else call him Terry Coon. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. I would never say Terry Coon, but people are calling him Terry Coon. Okay. Uh, yes. but he's clearly a white apologist, bro. I mean, yeah. he's the guy who would have been in the house like, why y'all trying to leave Massa? We got a good writer here in the chicken coop. You know what I'm saying? Got you, got I mean, you. Don't, I want you to realize, like, remember, he's really prominent right now because he's hosting America's Got Talent. Who was the original host of America's Got Talent? My boy, Nick Cannon. And Nick, Nick Cannon, Cannon yeah. That's bullshit, bro. Nick Cannon was up there with his uh, with his uh, turban, up there looking right. like a black and Latin. Mm-hmm. Like, nah, bro. And he said that ah. joke on his special. He said, NBC stands for niggas be careful. And they mm. fired him, bro. And then they, then the, then the black community came out. I was like, "Oh yeah, I ain't gonna fire him." And so they hired him back. And he was like, "Nah, I'm cool." And then he went and started the uh, the mask singer. So mm. they put this is this is a good example of what corporate America and what some folks would say white America does. They mm. find a black person to speak to black people because yeah. they think that all it is is black people speaking to each other that needs to happen. So don't throw me Terry Crews. AKA male Candace Owens in my face trying to tell me, <laughs> trying to tell me that I need to be quiet. Yo, what will you say if this is about equality? Then why are you trying to like basically quelch a movement that's gaining to get yeah. that equality? So yeah. he's showing his cards. He needs to go back to black history class. And uh I don't know, he maybe he should I would love to see him on an episode of Wild It Out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be fun. They would roast. <laughs> They will roast them. Hey, listen, we got a couple more, uh, a few more stories. I know, uh, Giovanni, you wanted to mention some stuff about in other news about our HBCU. HBCUs. Yeah, so um, pretty much Governor Ron DeSantis, or I wouldn't even say Governor Ron DeSantis, but the legislature, ultimately, they were able to pass this um, millions of dollars extra additional amount of money that will go to HBCUs, specifically mm-hmm. private HBCUs, Bethune, yeah. Um, Edward Waters and Florida Memorial. I think uh, Florida Memorial and Edward Waters, they're getting like a, an additional $3.5 million. And then Cookman, they're getting thirteen an additional $13 million than what they were getting before. So, you know, a lot of people are just kind of saying, you know, is this so Governor DeSantis can get the black vote? Mm. Um, or should we just be thankful that 
a governor or somebody is actually being able to give money to our private institutions because we already know FAMU is getting money because it's public and then it's FAMU. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's just kind of the conversation right now, you know, and I, honestly, from my opinion, I think Governor Ron DeSantis for signing that because with COVID going on, I thought he, I thought that he was going to um, veto. I thought it was going to be veto. Like, you know what? We can't give yeah. money to the HBCUs right now. But instead, he vetoed a whole bunch of other stuff that could have been going to other universities, not even other universities, but just other outside things like children's society and raising money yeah. for flag America. But he was like, no, I'm going to give to our black universities because if I do want to secure the black vote, then mm -hmm. I have to do something for them. So how do y'all feel about that? Uh, well, I go ahead, Luce Cannon. Go ahead. I, I, I've been saying this too. Number one, I cannot fault any black person for having black skepticism. I feel like mm -hmm. black people are entitled to be skeptics mm -hmm. because of everything that's going on. All right. Um, mm -hmm. But one thing I've been saying lately is, you know, because right about now we're seeing a lot of things change and yeah. change rapidly and change in our favor. And it's mm -hmm. kind of scary to see, like, when you turn on, your, you know, your Amazon Fire Stick and Amazon got a brightest day, Black Lives Matter. Or when yeah. and, and EA Sports got it, Black Lives Matter. Just four years ago, it was All Lives Matter. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I understand the skepticism. But I, one thing I have been saying is a mercenary is still an ally. Uh, we've been saying, and then another part we've been saying as black people, we need a black agenda. All right, mm -hmm. uh, we've been we've been calling out uh, our other counterparts. You know, uh, saying that you know white silence is consent. We've been calling for other people to get involved because when other people get involved, it ain't just oh the Negroes are upset again, kind of a deal. Mm -hmm. Got gotcha. you. People are doing that. So I mean, I don't blame uh, you know black people for being skeptics, but at the same time. When we get the progress that we've been asking for, we can't, we can't, we can't shun people to the point where you know we run the risk of impeding the progress, if you will. So mm. I, I'm, I'm yeah. very, I've been, I've been very uh, adamant about cautioning people about being too skeptical, if you will. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I ask those kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. How would you feel if Governor DeSantis signed this bill to give to allocate money to private HBCUs, but then refused to sign re police reform, refused to sign anything that the actual movement is requesting, and use mm -hmm. this as a sidestep to kind of make it so that he could say, "Well, look, I, I may not sign that, but I gave 13 million to Bethune Cookman." Mm -hmm. Ooh, so you're saying it's a, it might be a deflection. This is a Black Lives Matter mural on Rodman, uh, <laughs> uh, um, TJ. I mean, I, I, I agree with Bruce Cannon. I think that, yeah. I think that this is a, a good, you should, we should not be quick to criticize anything that does give us uh, yeah. an uplift, but we should also be quick to check power and see what the motive really is. Absolutely. And if this, Absolutely. If this, is, a, if this is an attempt to garner the black vote, then you got to do more. You know what I'm saying? You can't give us something. TJ, you you better than anybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. If you give us yeah. something we didn't ask for, we still gonna ask for what we want. We still gonna make our demands. I, I'm Thank telling you. you, listen, America is America is the worst restaurant black folks have ever been to. We keep oh. ordering stuff, we keep ordering justice and equality. They keep giving us take oh well, we gotta take down the statues. No, justice and equality. No, right. well, we're going to chase Aunt Jemima Rice. I mean, Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben. No, uh, we ordered, uh, we send it back. We, yeah. we ordered justice and equality. They're going to yeah. give us every side item on the menu, right. except for the main course that we asked for. So yeah. um, if, if this, I, I would give it a one star if it was if it was a Yelp on Yelp. <laughs> no. <laughs> Y'all get, get 50 stars. Y'all get one star for listening to the consumer so yes <laughs> that's what i would that's what i would do i agree with everything that you know that everyone's saying um i i agree but mm -hmm. um i i do think that you know i do think when it comes to civil rights and mm -hmm. and and one thing that i feel like that i've come to learn about and mm -hmm. that we lose track of is economic equality 
I do, mm-hmm. for example, and, and, you know, this is a whole different conversation, but mm-hmm. I, I believe in reparations, not just for slavery, but for the 400 years mm-hmm. of you know, uh, economic injustice against black people and, and, and how we've been, uh, how we've been, you know, economically oppressed, you know, through things like redlining and, you know, credit practices and lender practices and stuff like that, you know. So, um, no I, but I understand that this is a marathon and not a sprint. I, the marathon is is speeding up from what I can see, and I appreciate that. And to my point, when we in the while we on this marathon race, when we do get a boost. Or do, when we do get these these things like money for HBUs and you know mm-hmm. uh, corporations speaking out that would have been silent before, or a person that have a change of opinion and like you know what, uh, after looking at what happened to George Floyd, I understand now. You know when people mm-hmm. have that epiphany, I think we have to have some gratitude and uh, you know and show some appreciation while at the same time still applying pressure and still keeping our eyes on the prize. Mm. All right, bet, bet, love it, love it. Listen, uh, the only other story I had was um, 2K Sports. I don't know everybody, any gamers out there. Uh, 2K is honoring Kobe Bryant. Once again, RP Kobe Bryant. He's gonna be on the Legends Edition. He's gonna be on the cover. Um, So, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and cop that because he's one of my influences and one of my favorite players. But I know we had some other stuff. so actually, actually, we're going to do more of the story, right? So this is a segment that we've done on our show all the time. At the end of our show, is we give everybody their piece to say, kind of summarize the conversation of what we've been talking about, put a bow on it, uh, give, your moral of the, give your moral of the story, and make sure that you give out your social media as well. So... Um, <laughs> Y'all could I'm, I'm gonna do Jen's because Jen had to Jen had to run. She was getting it, eaten up with bugs. And she was out with her family, so she said her moral of the story is uh, wear bug wear bug spray. <laughs> so that was her moral of the, her moral of the story. Y'all can find her at at Jess Andrade at Jess Andrade. So uh, Giovanni, show me how it's done. What's the what's your moral of the story? Um, my moral of the story will have to reflect back on what comedian Luce Cannon said about don't just be so quick to criticize, even when it comes to wearing masks and mm-hmm. just things that are happening right now politically. Like, let's just try to dig deeper. Let's just try to gain more insight, read mm-hmm. up on it, figure out what's going on, figure out how we can be a voice, like comedian Vince Taylor said um, in our mm-hmm. community, and just try to be active. And um, yeah, and I and I appreciate everybody here, and I love you all, and I, I appreciate all this blackness, blackity blackness right here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's that's my moral of the story. Just uh, don't be quick to criticize, and uh, use your voice um, to speak up about blackness. That's what's up, uh, Jen. Jen Weeks, comedian Jen Weeks. Thank you so much uh, for being here. What's your moral? Of, what's your moral of the story? Uh, my moral of the story is. Black Lives Matter, even when you creep with, uh, when you're a cougar who creep and he's too young and he don't keep his mouth shut. His life, <laughs> like, even though he got banished from Treasure and Pleasure Island, his life still matters, okay? Oh um, my goodness. <laughs> that's what I've come up with, okay? And if you want to have an open marriage and you can't handle it, just open your bank account, like Vince said. That's all <laughs> That is my moral of the story. Um, and where can they find you on social media? You can find me on Facebook and Instagram, Jen Weeks, J-E-2-N's Weeks, like days and weeks. Follow me online, not in real life, okay? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Loose Cannon, comedian Loose, comedian Loose Cannon. My what's moral your moral of the story? Moral of the story is I'm comedian Loose Cannon, like a tribe called Quest and a pimp named Slip that you say that whole thing. When you look for me on social media, you got to type in all three words, including the comedian part, comedian Loose Cannon. I'm on I'm on everything as comedian Loose Cannon. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, GoFundMe, uh, all that as comedian Loose Cannon. Um, I'm raising money for my stand up special right now. We got the, uh, you know, I sent you the invite, TJ, and whatnot. Okay. Um, you know, we're we going to be down at uh, Sanford uh, in here in, in the city of Sanford at Angels on July 18th at seven o'clock. We got the fundraiser where you pay your donate $25. We give you a free comedy show and a plate to eat. 
and have a good time. So come on out to that. You got we got the we got the tickets currently running on uh, Eventbrite. And if you go on my Facebook page as Comedian Loose Cannon, you can see the event information. Thanks. All right, word. Thank you. And that was uh, his moral of the story live from the Checkers Drive Through. That's what he. <laughs> Hey, give me a big view for man. Give me a big <laughs> uh, <laughs> Also, another moral of the story, real quick, is TJ. If you move to the left or the right, people can actually see the picture that you got in your bag. Oh, oh you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Stay right there. Stay right there. They can see me now. You know. What I'm saying? There you go. <laughs> listen, listen. All this quarantine, this quarantine body right here. All right. So don't worry. <laughs> it's extra fluffy over here. So sorry that they. Couldn't see your picture. I got you though. They will follow you. Yeah, you got a whole shoulder blocking me though. Just a whole <laughs> shoulder. Vince, Vince Taylor, man. Vince, what's going on? Uh, what's your moral of the story, brother? I think the moral of the story is uh, the soapbox needs to put some ground rules on their guests because you got loose cannon at the Whole Foods. You got uh, <laughs> guests. Uh, outside in front of somebody curtain uh, getting ate up by mosquitoes. You got Gina G trapped in the closet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, I think y'all need to establish a little bit uh, of a better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like this. And and I, I ain't gonna let it go by the wayside. That loose cannon just told everybody that for a twenty five dollar donation, they get a free show and a free plate. Like I, I think that might have went over everybody's head, but that's yeah. brilliant, homeboy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but my my I'm role, like and I'm a little and I'm a little hot with you, TJ, because I was all ready to talk about the Clayton County Sheriff and how he looked like little. Oh, Nazi. we did miss that. I, yeah, that's on that's on me. Go ahead, go ahead, give it to him. I, I, I completely. He looked like an object uncle. He looked like somebody who, hell, I want to take my cop to the old time road. <laughs> Yo, didn't they come, wait, real quick. Didn't they look like, he thought he was the hardest cop in the, in the no, world. No, cool cop, you, like, come on I don't on know now. what that was about. What, right. he, he really tried it, but you know what? You know, First of all, Black Lives Matter, but Black people are petty too. That should be a hashtag. You know they're gonna march over in his in his county soon. Oh, you know it's to, coming. It he, 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 like, he made it seem like he wanted all the smoke. So okay. It looked to me like he BET came up with it. their own version of. Uh, it looked like like BET made their own version of the Dukes of Hazard when I looked up there and seen him he up did. there. I, I I was like, what is this real life? Please tell me this is like a, this got to be one of them skits that Lewis Cannon them put up. Uh, Listen, yeah. I had it. You know what? Just so you just so you know, I wasn't BSing you. I had it queued up here. Ah, there he go. There he go. Hey. <laughs> no. to come to I just forgot and think that for one second that we'll bend our backs for you. You're sadly mistaken. <laughs> I know what happens when line. lawlessness prevails. And in this day and time, God is raising up men and women, just like the folks you see standing behind me, mm. who will Nothing have strong enough. backbones and will stand in the gap between lawlessness and the good citizenry okay. that we're sworn to protect and serve. Mm -hmm. So you can threat all you want. You can say, hey, let's go to Clay County <laughs> or let's go to some other peaceful county where their problems don't exist. Mm or not so much like across this country where relationships are great and not strained and where the they people are support not. Care and support the men and women who I wear the uniform concept. and you have something <laughs> Javani so nice uh, y'all did good baby I like the <laughs> oh come on bro you this this all I saw that well I want to take my horse to the old road I want to Right to the like, all I can stop. see, all I see is hat, bro. All I see is hat. <laughs> he cut I, can't see, I can't see nothing past the hat, homeboy. Oh my goodness. Uh, just to just to wrap up, because I don't, you know, I'm long winded. Uh, my moral <laughs> of the story would be: use your platform mm. to get your message across. There's mm. a way to do it. There's mm. a way to do it. It might be uncomfortable. It might yeah. be difficult to figure that way out. But there is a way to do it. So don't you don't have to have, oh, I'm the activist over here and I can't say nothing on stage. There is mm -hmm. a way. But if you really want to get that point across, you will lose people. But mm -hmm. the people that's supposed to be there will be there. So use your platform. That goes for everybody in the Orlando comedy community, everybody in the comedy community. Sometimes comedians and entertainers need to speak up. 
Because sometimes mm. you never know. They might be the uh, that that one little push that gets somebody to change their mind about some of their opinions. That's real yeah, talk. Yeah, no man. doubt. Where can they find you on social media, uh, Vince? Uh, they can find me on aisle nine at uh, the Dollar General with uh, Luke Cannon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm at I'm at the real Vince Taylor on Facebook, the real Vince Taylor on Instagram, the real Vince Taylor on Twitter, real Vince Taylor on Black Planet, uh, Christian Mingle. I'm a uh, at uh, Long uh, Manding. Now nah, let me stop. Uh, now nah, those are my <laughs> the, the real Vince Taylor Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube and and Twitter. Okay. Word, and word. you can catch me in the street with TJ getting it in, bro. Could be in TJ, bro. We be in the street, bro. Listen, listen. Uh, but I, on your Facebook page, you got that same cowboy hat on as uh, the sheriff. <laughs> you got a cowboy hat. Look, 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 look at her, Simba. Anybody ask you uh, to come up here with your uh, 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 your cone skin shirt? Don't talk for me, no, no. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just but playing. You nah, it looks, it listen, looks great now. Yo, Thank listen. Uh, I just want to say my moral of the story is, look, this is, I'm just happy that they released the video of the surveillance video of who did the damage on the uh, the, the mural. Uh, and everybody looked and immediately looked at the size of those people and said, it wasn't TJ. So there's not many benefits <laughs> <laughs> to being big. But they looked at it and the people immediately said, my size has exonerated me. <laughs> any, from any wrong, from any wrong game. Listen, now, yes, yes, exactly. Look, uh, all all jokes aside, you know, I really needed this. Selfishly, I had comedians on because I needed this energy. I needed this authenticity um, when we're out there fighting. And I felt some of the activists themselves were like, "Listen, you know, it's kind of wearing on them and stuff for everything that we're doing." As far as like, because it's a lot. And so I think I, my moral little story will be. Uh, fighting for black for justice and equality uh, and against anti-black racism that's good but also black joy your mental health and your peace is that just as important and I thank God for comedians like y'all for keeping keeping us into perspective and giving us that balance and standing in the paint with us on stage and in the streets so I appreciate y'all y'all can follow me on uh, or follow the soapbox soapbox podcast with 2x um yeah and you know when we started the soapbox i really wanted to incorporate uh comedians because comedians give such uh authentic commentary on everything that's going on and and you're funny as hell so i'm not a comedian but i'm i call it i'm kind of like sort of funny i'm like cookout <laughs> funny like if the chicken is wrong i'm gonna say something <laughs> you see what i'm saying but um, I appreciate everybody being here. I really needed this show. It was funny. My cheeks hurt because I was actually laughing, chopping <laughs> up, having a good time with the family. Y'all are welcome back anytime. And yes, blackout, funny, this right here, y'all don't steal that because uh, anybody <laughs> out the audience, because I'm actually, we're going to actually do that because we need to, we didn't have our one year anniversary show. I want to have some uh, ideas. I don't know this, we were talking about this uh, a little earlier, but yep, we will do something once it's safe enough for everybody to get together and have have a good time or whatever and into the capacity. We will do something uh, big and major when it comes to comedy and social justice, all the good stuff. So thank you so much for watching The Soapbox, for Vince, for Giovanni, for Jesse, for Alan York, who couldn't make it here tonight, for a comedian, Loose Cannon, for Jen Weeks, and for Gina G. This is TJ Legacy on The Soapbox Podcast. We out. Peace. Thanks, TJ. Thanks for doing that. Thank you. No problem. No problem.